Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Can, uh, well, I got some dance music going on. You guys don't want to see me dance. Hey, can, uh, can, we, can you do me a favor? Can we stand to our feet in honor of the ladies of this house and just give a round of applause? We just honor you. Come on, guys. We honor you. We're proud of you. We love you. Amen. Thank you so much for everything you do. Listen, all the ladies in here, whether you're a mom or whether you are an aunt or a sister or a daughter, we just honor you and never doubt the impact that you can have on the people's life around you. And we will always be a house that empowers the women. Amen. And uh, also, I want to take a moment just to honor my mom. She's right here on this corner right here. That's my mom. That's and then my wife is around here, not yet, and she was playing the keys. Let's just, uh, you know, we, she's a mom of four kids, and people ask if I like kids. I'm like, well, I really like my wife, so, so we got four <laughs> kids. But anyways, um, let's just, uh, if, if you can, if you see her, tell her Happy Mother's Day as well. She's not in here right now. Come on, guys, we can have a little bit of fun, right? So today is our communion service, and it's one of my favorite services that we do. It's a time where we get to hear from different story of, uh, stories from different people's lives and, and find out what God is doing and how he's interacting in their life. And I hope it's a time that encourages you, challenges you, and inspires you. And so we're going to invite some ladies out here in a moment. But first, I, I want to share something with you. And I just want to take a moment, so bear with me. And it's this reality that in the kingdom of God there, and even with God, there are so many things that are hard to describe. Like our words, our vocabulary are very limited. And so you'll notice in scripture, a lot of times you'll see things or, or form like it, where the author will use a statement, it is like. You know what I'm talking about. It'll refer, even when describing God, it is like. Because how do you describe the undescribable? And so what we do is we take what we know and we use it as a basis to describe what we do not know. Do you follow me? We do it all the time, even in our day and day interactions with people. And a perfect example of this is in scripture when Jesus says himself, he says, the kingdom is like a farmer. Have you heard that before? It's a very popular one. And so bear with me. I want to show you a couple other examples. One of them is the author or the prophet Isaiah. And what he says in Isaiah 66, 33, he says this. He says, as a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. And you will be comforted over Jerusalem. Now, I want you to stick with me for a moment here. Because I believe that there is something in the way that a mother loves, nurtures, protects and cares for her child that reflects the nature of God. And I know rightfully so we always refer to God as a father and he is. But there's 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 an aspect of nature that I'm going to show you a couple more verses here that's reflected in the way a mother takes care of her child. Here's another example. If you would Genesis chapter 1 Verse 27 says, so God created man, so mankind, the human species, he created him in his own image, in the image of God, he created him. How? Male and what? Female, he created them. So male and female together reflect the image of God. All right, hold on. Let's, let's, let's check out another one. Hosea chapter 1 verse or Hosea chapter 13 verse 8 says, I will fall upon them like A bear robbed of her cubs. Let's look at one more. Matthew chapter 23, verse 37 says, Jesus says, How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings and you were not willing? Hear me. There is so much that you and I can learn, understand, and grab about the nature of God that's reflected, that's shown, that's revealed in a way that a mother loves her child. There's nothing like the love of a mother. Now, let me say this too, because I believe, I'm, I'm pretty confident there are people in here that one, you don't have your mother anymore, 
or you didn't have a good mother, or, or you lost your child, or, or, or different things like that. And I want to say something. I want to believe and pray that God will send you spiritual moms in your, in your life. Amen? In fact, I, I pray all the time that God will send spiritual moms to this house because we need you. A son and a daughter need a spiritual mother and a father. And a spiritual mother and a father need a son and a daughter. It's the healthy way of doing life. And so would you guys agree with me that there's nothing like the love of mother? Amen? All right, so what we're going to do on that note, I'm going to invite some guests out. And there are mothers in this house, and we're going to ask them some questions and get to know them and interview them a little bit. And I encourage you that if any of them connect with you real well and and you want to get to know them better, then invite them over to your house and make them dinner, right? (laughs) That's what you can do. And so if you, because this is the thing, I know there's ladies in this house sometimes, you're looking for those spiritual moms, you're looking for those relationships, you know you need those voices in your life. Take the time to, to go after and pursue those things. Be a good student of relationships that God put, puts before you by making room for them in your life. Amen? So let's do this. Let's put our hands together as we invite our ladies today. Come on. Here they come. They're going to navigate past the obstacle course. All right. Katie, I almost sat on you. I'm sorry about that. Anyways, ladies, thank you so much for being with us here today. We're so excited to have you. And and once again, happy Mother's Day. Um, We're honored by everything that you do in your own family. And so we're going to ask you a few questions, get to know you a little bit better, and inspire these wonderful, awesome people, the Vertical Life Church. And what I'm going to do first, I'm going to talk to you, Mary Beth. I'm going to ask you a question. And, um, you know, you've been through a lot of transitions in your life. I have. You know, you got kids that were spread out all over the nation. And because you and I have been praying real hard, most of them are here. Exactly. 75% of them, we got one more to get. That's right. Right? That's right. And and so you've, you've had a... Uh, travel and bring them from different states and all kinds of things. Not only that, but you're a grandma, right? Yes. Yes. And then you recently had another addition. And so you're a grandma again, right? Little baby, mm-hmm. not too long ago. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. I'm Whoa, like, we forgot like, a child. Wait, wait, wait. She's a year. She's all right. A we year. need a new grandma. So, yeah. They want to come up here. All right. We're forgetting our children. Anyways. <laughs> um, so what I want to ask you is, is, is for you to kind of talk about the transitions in the life cycle of raising a family, and how do you stay steady through those seasons? Okay. Well, I mean, I did write some notes, so forgive me for looking down sometimes. Um, my husband and I basically, you know, we're parents to four kids, three married, three grandkids. Um, 32 years on the 23rd oh, is wow. our wedding awesome. anniversary. So, um, But one of the things that we always um, tried hard to do was to seek God's plan for us as a couple, as a family, um, and uh, finding where God would have us um, spiritually, um, and finding a church community that would um, challenge us, equip us, um, encourage us, um, do life with us, um, and um, submitting ourselves under God's authority um, to guide and raise our family. Um, we learned to surround us with those people that would encourage us and equip us. Um, we had pastors that um, have a heart and a passion for people and their spiritual journey and their relationship with Jesus. And so that really was, I think, very instrumental in, for us as a young family that would later carry us through those transitions of life as our kids grew and left the home, got married, ran off before, for, no, I'm just kidding. Um, um, but um, and then through transitions of job changes, Steve left a job as a welder with a railroad um, to take a, a position as a staff pastor at the church we were at. So that was like a huge uh, time and a transition <laughs> a challenge in our life that um, we had to navigate through. Um, and I will say that it wasn't always glorious, but um, staying steady, um, praying hard, (laughs) a lot, 
Um, and then also examining my heart and our heart together as a couple and family. Um, what are my dreams? What are my hopes for my kids, for myself, passions? Um, and writing them down and praying over them. Um, surrounding myself with other women, other people who would pray with me, believe with me um, for wherever God would have us. Um, and just anchoring those dreams and hopes and desires um, in the Word of God. Um, there's a scripture, Joshua 1 9, um, and it has become our, mine and Steve's, life scripture. Um, and it says, I'm going to read the NIV version. Um, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Um, do not be afraid. Discourage. Uh, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So knowing that deep in my heart, um, deep down inside, that no matter what, no matter what my emotions were, what my feelings were, that God is for me. Um, and he, his plan is bigger than what I could ever imagine. Um, uh, let's see. As you stated, I guess one of the most difficult transitions was having my children in three different states. I am very fortunate and blessed to have my three daughters and their husbands um, here right now. <laughs> and my son is and his wife are in transition, so we're we're praying that that God will place them where they're supposed to be. Hopefully, North Carolina. Um, um, and also, other ways that I stayed steady was to. Again, surround myself with people um, that will challenge me, push me out of my comfort zone. Thank you, Nicole. Um, <laughs> inside. Um, and then looking at the examples around me. Uh, my mom was widowed at a very young age. She had to raise four of us at the age of 42. Um, and just watching her navigate um, through that and raising us. And she taught me to be brave and to be strong. And um, as were a lot of the other examples um, in my life. So that's awesome. Um, you know, obviously, there, you can you can sense there's a, a lot of different transitions. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, there's people in here. I'm sure they're going through some form of transition in their life. So my my question for you then is, if you had to, like, if you were sitting with a lady and you had 30 seconds with her. And you were to give her one piece of practical advice to help her and her family. And it could apply to all of us to keep the main thing, the main thing. What would that be in 30 seconds? In 30 seconds. Don't major on the minors. Um, pray hard and unceasingly. Um, and trust um, the people that God has placed in your life. Um, No, I think I think it's great. Don't major on the minors. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so easy for us to make a big deal out of. Oh, hello! I'm giving my back to all of you guys. Um, it's so easy to make uh, to make a big thing, a big deal out of minor things in mm -hmm. life, you know. And so I think that's I think it's a, a very good piece of advice. A lot of times, if we just wouldn't sweat those little things, our life would be a lot better. And trusting the people around you, what you said, mm -hmm. that's one of the most difficult things to do is to trust the people that God has placed in your life. And let me tell you something. I really believe that when God is doing something new in your life, like a transition, mm -hmm. he will bring a new voice into your life. Yeah. And you have a moment in that season to decide if you would trust that voice or not. Mm -hmm. Remember, if you look through scriptures and stuff, when God's doing, when God's doing something, he's going to bring a new, a, it was a prophet came, or, 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 or there was a change, there was a new voice that came, and so learn to identify the voices that God has brought in your life and trust them. That's the hardest part, and trust them. Thanks a lot. Can you give, let's, let's give her a moment. <laughs> Kelly, my next question is for you. So you are on this journey. Uh, not everyone knows, but she's on this journey of adoption. You know, they already have kids, and they want to adopt another one. And so, or two, three, how many? Does Darren know that? Yeah. <laughs> as many as possible. And so uh, there, she's great. And so uh, they're in the process of adoption. And uh, so can you tell us a little bit about that journey? Yeah. So I was thinking about it because um, I knew he was going to ask me about adoption. And it's hard a little bit because I think people overcomplicate it. 
I think we could probably sum up our journey with adoption just with the word obedience. We just felt like God was calling us to open up our home and our family to another child or two or more. (laughs) And um, we just said yes. And so I think um, it's just been a huge journey of faith. And for me, I've actually always wanted to adopt. Whenever I was little, I actually like begged my parents to adopt. I heard these crazy stories about these kids in Africa. I was like, please, can we bring one home? And my mom was like, no, we can't. Um, but I think too, this is just a little side note, I guess, but I think God puts desires in our hearts as children a lot of times too, because it's like an innocent place where his dreams can grow. Because I think a lot of times as we get older, sometimes worldly maturity can get in the way of a childlike faith. And that's one thing I feel like God has been reiterating to my husband and I is just like, it's just simple. Like, I just said, open your home. Like, you're a mom to two girls already. You can be a mom. Again, you know, I have another child for you or more who might not be born of your body, but that I'm birthing in your spirit and in your heart right now. And um, we are just saying yes to that. And then I think on the more, I don't know if practical is the right word, but um, just a little statistic for you guys. (laughs) Um, I heard one time that if one family in every three churches adopted, there would be no waiting children in the U.S., which is like crazy. Say that again. If one family in every three churches, so not even one family in every church, one family in every three churches adopted, there would be no waiting children in the U.S. So I know that not everyone's called to adopt, not everyone's called to foster, but a lot more people are called to adopt than are adopting, clearly, because we are God's answer to that, you know? So I thought, okay, I could be one in three churches. <laughs> so let me, let me ask you this. Um, uh, if truth be told, I'm sure there's people in here have been wrestling or have wrestled or tried to ignore the reality of maybe God is talking to them about adopting. And... Um, a lot of times in that, you know, there's fears that rise up in people's hearts. You know, they got all kinds of fear. Well, what if this? What if that? Well, I got kids. What if something happens? What if they're misused? And they bring it. There's all kinds of questions that we ask ourselves, you know, because you want to protect what God has entrusted you with. But God also calls us to expand. You know, the kingdom of God never creates orphans. It's a father's heart to always adopt. It says in Psalms that he places people in families. And so that's a plug in. You should be plugged into a local church. Anyways, um, we're all called into to be a part of a family. And so what would you say to people who maybe are wrestling with that and have some form of fear about, you know, what's a practical thing that you would tell them if maybe God is talking to them? Or, or maybe they don't even want to entertain it because <laughs> they're afraid of what God might say. Um, but what, what would you say to address that fear? Yeah, so first of all, I would say God has not given us a spirit of fear. So again, it's not as complicated, I think, as we make it. But um, yeah, so there's definitely a lot of, you know, risks involved. And, you know, most babies who are put up for adoption, there's no dad that's present. So there's like uncertain medical history. People get nervous about, um, you know, dealing with the birth family and all these different things. And I think, again, it just goes back to that obedience of like knowing that, like, are you making your decision based on situations and circumstances? Or are you making your decision based on what God is calling you to do? And I think we let the world dictate what we're going to do or our circumstances dictate instead of the Lord. And there's definitely place for obviously common sense and good judgment and knowing what you can handle. But I think it's being willing to take all of that to God and say, but if you say, yeah, I still want you to do it. Like I'll say yes, you know, and like trusting that he's going to equip you and give you, you know, the courage and the strength and like the sanity to do what he's calling you to do. And, um, and James, let me just read this verse real quick. James one twenty seven. It says, um, well, I'm not on the right page. In James one twenty seven, I think, and somewhere in James, it says that true religion, <laughs> you can look it up, it says true religion um, is caring for orphans and widows and not to be polluted by the world. And to me, that's saying, like, there's so much brokenness in family, and God's kingdom comes through family. And his answer to that brokenness is us. You know, so he's calling everybody to care for orphans. And so I think the important thing, if it's something you're wrestling with or that it's on your heart, is to say, what can I do? Or like, what are you calling me to do? Because he's not calling you to adopt 100 babies. I mean, maybe he is. 
that would be crazy. But you know what I mean? It's like, I think you go through all these scenarios in your head of like, what if this, what if this, what if this? But it's like, God might not call you to any of those things. He might just be calling you to one baby who needs you to be their mom, you know, or, you know, one five-year-old who just went through some trauma that needs you to just like give them a, a safe place for a little bit. And he's not calling you to every single bad scenario and every single crazy story. You know, it might just be one. So I would just encourage you if you're wrestling with that to know that, you know, don't make your decisions off of fear, but move forward in faith and just trust that God's going to give you what you need for whatever situation he calls you to. That's so good. I mean, I feel like we could sit on that for a while and I could ask all kinds of questions on that topic. You know, don't be led by fear, be led by faith. Don't be led by fear, be led by love. You will never get anywhere in the kingdom if you allow convenience to lead you. Um, there's so many truths that we could pull from that little section. Um, that's awesome. Thank you. Can we put our hands together in honor? Katie. Katie, you're lovely. You know that? Like, she is this kindest little lady I've ever met. And uh, you can't touch the floor, huh? And uh, she, uh, she's a prayer warrior. And what's interesting is on the outside, she's this, this cute little lady, and I love her. And, but on the, and, 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 and in the spirit, I can imagine that she's just this warrior, you know? And so, in fact, can you just tell us a little bit about your story? I'd be happy to. Um, well, I was 25 years old when I was born again. I was married. I had a two-year-old daughter. Um, God had pretty much instantly delivered me from uh, smoking marijuana every day, just trying to be happy. I was a chain smoker. He delivered me from that. Um, my husband, on the other hand, just went deeper into those things and didn't want anything to do with my newfound faith. So he left me for another woman, and um, I was then pregnant with our second child. Um, from there, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. Um, so you, after you okay, had your second child... So, the, the very hardest thing that I've ever been through in my entire life is being abandoned by my husband. Um, but the amazing thing... Can I ask how old you were at that time? I was 25. 25. Yep. The most amazing thing about the whole thing is going through the very hardest thing of my entire life, the most painful thing. Um, I was also on a new journey. I just met God. And that made all the difference for me. Yeah. So... Um, during those t times, um, what happened after that? When you, when your husband left you, you here you are with your, a child and another one on the way, right? Um, what, 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 what happened after that? Well, I spent the next four years as a single mother on welfare. Yep, and uh, just fell more and more in love with Jesus. Spent more and more. He was my everything. He was the, the way that I got through all of that. And, and honestly, those four years I can look back on now and thank God tremendously for because they, they started me off with a very firm foundation because he, he had to be everything for me. But you probably were not thankful for them in that moment, right? Or maybe you were. You know, I, I don't think I really thought about it. I just was having a really good time getting to know him. Mm, that's good. Yeah. So let me ask you this. During these times, um, how did it, what, what was the role of the Holy Spirit in your life in encouraging you and strengthening you during those seasons until now? He was there every, every moment of the time I went through that. I just dove in head first to my relationship with him, I spent my, when the kids were in bed at night, he was my companion. I, I didn't have television. Um, I didn't have a dollar to my name. Um, but he was everything to me. And he, the Holy Spirit just, he just loved me. He just loved me through all of it. Yep. That's awesome. So what would you, real quick, I know this wasn't even a question I'm supposed to ask you, but I'm going to ask you. Um, you know, there's people in here, I'm sure maybe they're going through some kind of hard time. There might be some single moms in here or watching later on YouTube um, that are in the same spot, same position. And sometimes when you're in crisis, there's a temptation to, um, to make 
decisions of compromise because you want out of the pain. Like you want to get out of this situation so you will attach yourself to maybe a man that you know you shouldn't be with. You'll even marry them or you'll make other decisions to try to get yourself out of a season of pain. So if you are sitting with that person who may be in a season where they don't know which way to turn, what would it be that you would like to say to them if you could encourage them? Stay as close to God as you can. Just um, enjoy him. He's going to satisfy you. Um, There's nothing in this world. There's no man that can fill that need. It's just God. Um, uh, Just love him and get to know him. Read your Bible. Pray. Um, Stay in the sanctuary. Just enjoy his presence as much as you can. Get to know him. That's really all that there is to it. Fear the Lord and and know him. You know, I can relate not to um, a lot of your story, but I can relate to seasons of pain. And uh, and what she's saying might be a little bit hard to um, grasp or believe because it can kind of sound cliche in a sense of, well, spend time with God. Okay. Read your Bible. Okay, pray. Okay. And you're like, okay, next. I'm going to go for someone else for advice. And there's a temptation to put what seems foolish away for the wisdom of man. And, and, and the, the reality is, like, in, in my life, you know, some of you know my story. I lost a brother, a sister, and things like that. There was um, the only thing that kept me, and I'm sure my mom can relate to even losing her children. The only thing that kept me, kept her, is what she said, is spending time with him. And what I mean by that, I would literally go into my room, turn on some worship music, grab a pillow, and lay on the floor and cry. That's it. That's it. But... The thing is, is that in those moments, it's I was choosing him over anything else. Yeah. And in that time, I'm telling you, when you're in a crisis, you have a brief moment to choose where you will plant that seed. Will you plant it with God and allow good roots to grow? Or will you plant it in the world and flesh and let other roots grow? And so you have a, it's a brief moment to decide. You don't have much time to decide where you're going to plant your trust. Amen. Thank you. Can we just put our hands together? That was fantastic. Sarah, are you pregnant? Oh, gosh. You yeah. know, you're never supposed to ask that question, but obviously I knew. We were joking earlier about if I was going to have enough oxygen to actually do yeah. this. So sorry if I sound like Darth Vader. She's like, can they, he- can they hear my voice? <sighs> breathing. She's like, I want the stool. <laughs> but anyways, um, Sarah, um, what has the Holy Spirit been teaching you personally just about motherhood? Well, first of all, when I was first given the opportunity to speak today, I was very hesitant and I felt really unqualified. Um, so I started praying about it and God gave me some really neat revelation, which is good. <laughs> thankfully. (laughs) So I was able to say yes, but just a note to encourage everyone. If you ever are feeling unqualified for anything, all that God asks is that you listen to him and say yes to be qualified. Um, So what he showed me is that he kind of led me to the story of Abraham. And I started reading through the story. And for those of you who might not know, Abraham is this guy who God had given a promise to and a word to. And he carried this promise that his descendants would outnumber the stars and that they would be blessed because they were in his family. And so then he has this one son, Isaac, and it's his miracle son. And then one day God asks him to sacrifice his son to kill him. And I started thinking about this story, and he said yes. And I thought, wow, you know, he valued and carried the promises and just trusted God so much that he said, yes, I will give you my son. And for those of us who are parents, if you could just take a minute and think about the weight of that with your own child. Can you imagine that with your own child? 
valuing God's promise so much that you would do that. And so ultimately, obviously, God does, he doesn't follow through with it. Um, God says, no, I was just kind of testing you to see. And um, the crazy thing is that God did that for us. He sent his son to maintain a relationship with us. And that's what we as mothers, that's kind of what he showed me. That's what I, as a mom, am called to do. And we as mothers and even fathers and leaders are called to carry his promises and equip and cultivate our relationship with this next generation so that we can pass it on to them and then they can pass it on. And I just have this beautiful picture of 10 generations from now, um, you know, our children will have sent this like living word and promise through the generations to continue God's story. So with with that um, understanding and revelation, how has that impacted you in the way that you are a mom, like in, in how you mother your children? Yeah, well, I would say it's been a gradual process and I'm very far from being where I need to be. Um, but that's the beauty of it is that we can always grow. I would say at the beginning of my motherhood journey, I was sort of, and I think it's very easy still for me to get distracted with um, mothering from a place of, well, I see these behaviors and I see these weaknesses that I might want to improve or that, you know, all these things. And you try to sort of fix it yourself versus coming at, coming to your children from a place of I'm really seeking who God created you to be and trying to parent from that place. And so for me, um, it's been a gradual process, and I'm still going to grow in pursuing my kids and maintaining a loving connection with them and knowing who God created them to be so that when me carrying the promise does require something that's uncomfortable on their part, like discipline or consequences or things like that, If I still have this loving connection with them, they're going to trust me even in those times. And then as they grow older, they're going to see how much I value the promise and God's word in my life and his relationship with me. And I will be able to pass it on to them because there's that trust and that foundation. Good. Amen. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to ask you each one more question. And so... um, We're going to try to keep these questions to probably a minute. Can we do that? The first question, Mary Beth, is for you. And um, for anyone struggling with transitions, you know, I kind of asked this a little bit ago um, about what advice you would give them, and you gave a few of them. But if you could even revisit that for just a moment and maybe pass something along to them that they can walk away with today. That would be awesome. What would it be? Well, you actually touched on it just a few minutes ago. But um, firstly and foremost, find where God will have you, a church community, um, and, and, get, and get planted. So this is a great Amen. church. Amen. We are so thankful that God brought us here um, and my children. Um, and, you know, become some, part of something that's bigger than you. Um, um, and that's and as you pursue your relationship with God, he pursues you and he's, he honors our obedience to, which we've actually kind of all talked about. Um, pray again, don't stop praying. Um, don't give up, um, on, on that, you know, the season that you're in is, it's temporary and God's going to move you through it. Um, one of the scriptures I, I found was um, 2 Corinthians 4.18. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And so know that God's got an eternal plan for you, um, for each of us. Um, and not to focus on those physical things that we don't see, but know that there's something more and something bigger. Um, and just be thankful, like fill your heart with thankfulness um, for where you're at, for the season that you're in. And know that you're not alone. There are others. There are other people that are going through or having gone through and seek those people out, you know. Um, you know, um, what else? No, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Thank you so much. Um, Katie, I have a question for you. Um, if... If, if, um, what, what, what would be 
um, this is kind of like your final thought. What would be a piece of advice you would give to some young mothers in this house? All right. Well, it, it comes from a, a scripture, Romans twelve two, that tells us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so we know the will of God. Um, that only comes one way. That's by spending time with the Lord. And um, to just approach him first to enjoy him. Not to go into prayers, uh, uh, petitioning and requests, but to just enjoy him first. That's where the renewal comes from. That's where the transformation comes from. And we need that every day. So to try to get that time in as early in the day as you can so that you can raise up those outstanding sons and daughters of God. Um, And the most beautiful thing happens when you're in that place. And he takes you past that to those the time of petitioning and requesting. But, but um, I'd just like to read a quick passage from Psalm 63, verses 2, 5, and 8, that just gives you a, a picture of what it's like to just take that time and enjoy him. So it says, I'm energized every time I enter your heavenly sanctuary. The anointing of your presence satisfies me like nothing else. You are such a rich banquet of pleasure to my soul. With passion, I pursue and cling to you. That's good. Thank you so much. Uh, Sarah, I have a question for you um, regarding what the Holy Spirit has been talking to you about. What would you say to ladies who are struggling with, you know, um, trusting and believing God in that promise and making the difficult decisions of following through? Yeah, I would just um, encourage you, for me, it's a lot about mental mindset. So uh, trying to put your mind in a place of trusting God and just meditating on the fact that you're not alone, thankfully. Um, God almost has more skin in the game than you do. So with raising your kids or raising up this next generation. And um, so that's just comforting to me, knowing that I don't have to do it alone. Uh, The second thing is, I know as moms we get really overwhelmed sometimes, but I would say know who you are in Christ and take time to find that because when we parent from a place of, oh, I want what I want for my kids, like I want my kid to be good at sports, I want them to be smart, I want this for them, I want their comfort, we're parenting out of an alternate identity, and so they're going to be misguided. And then the last thing is that I would just say pray and process Pray and process first with God, um, and then with your spouse or with some other wise counsel if you're a single parent. Andrew and I have recently actually been going through a very difficult situation with one of our kids and just a lot of questions. What are we going to do? And Andrew's been specifically praying for uh, divine strategies and wisdom, and God's been answering it through me. But if we weren't processing together, we wouldn't have made progress like we have. And so we're still working on it, but just knowing that we can be together uh, makes us a lot more successful. So good. Kelly, um, I'm going to have you wrap this up for us. Um, Can you just give us maybe some final thoughts that you might have? Yeah, so actually this morning during worship, I feel like something that God just kept, the phrase that God kept putting in my mind is that brokenness does not have the final say. Um, I feel like you've heard a couple of different, you know, stories of brokenness, but, um, you know, like if you struggle with infertility or you have had miscarriages, like that does not have the final say. Like if you have a marriage that has fallen apart, like that brokenness doesn't have the final say. You know, if you have a child who's a prodigal, like that's not the final say. And just to encourage you to press into the redemption and the restoration that God has for you, because that is a promise. Like he promises it. And we live in a broken world. It's so like there's, there is brokenness. It's not like, oh, just, you know, believe in Jesus and trust him and everything will be rainbows. But brokenness doesn't have the final say. And so I say that to encourage anybody who maybe you have given up but also to remind us as the church that, like, we are the answer to that. So, like, if God is calling you to be a part of the redemption process, you know, through adoption, through reconciliation with a spouse, through pursuing and loving a child who has, like, gone another way, through fostering, you know, through all these different things, like, are you going to say yes? 
you know, because like your brokenness doesn't have the final word. And like, that's awesome. And like, praise God for that. But there are so many people who are in broken situations who are waiting for us to say yes to the Lord, you know, and like what an honor, you know, like what a privilege, like we get so wrapped up in like, you know, our comfort and stuff like you were saying. And like, I promise it will feel a little bit uncomfortable at first, but like the joy and the reward is like so much greater. Um, so, yeah. That will yeah. preach. That's good. Awesome. Come on. Can we put our hands together for these ladies? You guys can stand up and just come on. Let's just honor them a little bit more. Yeah, you guys can just head up that way right there. We're going to uh, transition to our communion time, and um, the ushers are going to start passing those out. And, uh, you know, it's just, I, f- I feel like in some ways, communion, the reason we do communion services is because I feel like in a lot of ways we've allowed communion to just kind of become this routine thing, disconnected from our hearts, and what was really intended to be you know when they would do communion they would gather together you know and celebrate and talk about the work of Jesus what he's been doing in them through them around them and so what you're hearing here today and that's why we do interviews and stuff is for the opportunity for you to see what God is doing in people's lives and be encouraged by it be inspired by it and find out also you know realize that you're not alone you know that you're not alone in, in, your, in your walk, in your journey. And so as we, as we take this communion, I want to encourage you with three different things. One of them is to look back. And what I mean by that is to look back on your life and, and, and recall the faithfulness of God in your life. Sometimes we're so concerned with what we're in in the moment or what's in front of us that we forget about the faithfulness of God. It's, it's so inc- and, and important for you to encourage yourself and build yourself up in, in God's faithfulness. And so I want to encourage you to look back. I also want you to want to encourage you to look ahead. And what I mean by that is to, you know, remember that Jesus is returning. Jesus is returning. And when you live with that mindset and that perspective, it begins to change the decisions that you make and the way that you live your life. So know that Jesus is re- returning. Look ahead. The last one is look within. Now, be honest, if I, I would not be a good pastor if I didn't press on this part a little bit. And that's to challenge you to look inside and see what God is wanting to realign in your life. You know, in, in, in this passage that we're going to read here in a moment in 1 Corinthians, it talks about how taking the communion in an unworthy manner. Now, I think a lot of times we just, we, we're half hearted about it. And we're half-hearted about the things that God's wanting to do in our life. And I want you to take a moment to look within and ask yourself, have I been obedient to what God's been asking me? Is there areas in my life that I need to repent of and I need to realign? Because let's be honest, it's so easy to drift. You know, our cars, every once in a while, we go get a routine what? Realignment, right? Right. And so even in our own lives, you, you, with your soul, you, there's moments where you just need a realignment. And so I want to encourage you that before we go into this, to just examine your heart and that, that ask, Holy Spirit, just show me any area where I'm being disobedient, where I'm not trusting you in. And it could be as simple as God's asking you to take a step in, in the area of your life and you're just not wanting to do it. I just encourage you to follow him. He's always worthy of our trust. Amen. Everyone have their communion. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24 through 49. It says, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You can take the bread. Verse 25 says, in the same way also, he took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You can take the cup. Verse 26 says, For often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come on. I'm going to ask you to stand, if you would, as we close out. We're going to close out with just a portion of a song. But during that time, I want to encourage you with the... We have a, a team back there that, is, that wants to pray with you. They want to stand with you and believe with you on any area of your life. And maybe you're someone here today, you know what, you don't have a relationship with Jesus. And today I want to invite you into that relationship. And there's people back there that would love to pray with you. Maybe also, guys, maybe, maybe you just need some prayer for, for healing. We believe that God heals. We believe that God restores. And we want you to join up with back there with the prayer team and they'll be more than happy to pray with you but I want to pray over you all for just one second Holy Spirit I thank you I thank you that you are just in this room and you're moving upon hearts and you're speaking to hearts you're reviving the hearts God I thank you Holy Spirit for what you're doing in each one of our lives and that you will continue to do what you love to do and that's to make known Jesus the Holy Spirit, you would do what you love to do, and that's to make known Jesus in each one of our life. In Jesus' name, and we all say, amen. Let's sing this last part.